Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Video Adrenaline with Adobe Premiere Pro. Today, I'm going to show you how to take a background, stock background, and force it to be the duration and the color that you want. Now, we have often look at backgrounds, and I think that's because they pop up so often in your video projects. So what we're going to do here is really sort of push this the way that we need it, and then turn this background into a lower third. Here's how it works. So here we go. I've got this shot, and I got this nice background. It's fine, but it's just not long enough. So I want to change the duration so it matches what I need. Easy enough. We can select this here and come on over and grab the Rate Stretch Tool. And this allows you to click on this and stretch it out so you get the duration that you want. And you see that the speed changes, and as you're dragging, it'll tell you how much longer it's going to be. That works fine, and you could tweak it that way. And I'm just going to set this here so it's about 20 seconds long, which is what I need for my particular graphic. There we go. And you see when we play that, Premiere Pro has stretched the footage and made it the duration that we need, and it does a good job of smoothing things out. Unlike other NLEs that might be a little bit choppy or does frame blending, this actually sort of stretches the frames out and does a nice high quality effect. But I really want to get the best part of this background in position to be the lower third bar. So here's how it works. We can go ahead and double click so this is loaded and go to Effect Controls. And what I'm going to do is sort of nudge this into position by dragging. Now you don't want to come over here and drag because if you get a decimal value or an odd number, you might flip the fields if it's interlaced video or get extra motion that you don't want, subpixel resampling. So I recommend you just drag this, and that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and drop on the crop effect. There we go. And what we're going to do here is just click the button here, and that gives us the ability to just grab a handle. And so now we can drag that so we got the size bar that we want, and that looks pretty good. Now I'm happy with that. What I might actually do is just play that to watch it back. And that looks pretty good. We've got a nice animated bar there for our text in our lower third. And then we've got the transparency behind there where the talking head's going to go. Okay, so now that we've got the bar where we want it, we're going to get the color that we need. And usually for a lower third, we're going to simplify this down. We don't want these rainbow colors, but we want some gentle variation. To start, I'm just going to strip the color out. So I'll type in black and white and get a nice high contrast black and white image. That works well. And then we're going to use the change color effect. And we'll do change to color, drop that on, and we type in the color we want. We say take white and make it this nice deep purple. That looks good. You're saying, well, nothing happened. Well, that's because we're only changing the hue. But if I tell it to change the hue and the saturation, you see that the colors are remapped. That looks great. Or you could even tell it to do all three. And that went a little too far, so I'll just set that to hue and saturation and adjust the softness to taste. That looks good. And you could tweak the tolerance down here, if necessary, to how much it goes. That looks good. And then always remember, you can click and refine that color, darkening that down as needed. If it's too bright or you need to further finesse it, just toss on that color effect and tweak the black and white adjustment here. So grab a color correction effect, such as the fast color corrector, and we'll drop that in here before change color. And now we can come down and just adjust the middle slider here. And you see darken things down or brighten it up, as well as clamp the output level so it just doesn't get as bright. That works really well using a combination of input and output levels to get the proper brightness value for your bar. And at this point, you've taken that custom background, retimed it, recolored it, repositioned it, and cropped it. And it's all ready to have a logo dropped in and the text for your lower third. So I hope that gives you a good idea just how much you could do right inside Premiere Pro. While After Effects is a great tool, there's no reason to have to jump ship to just do some basic color correction or reposition or crops. Premiere Pro is very powerful and lets you do some motion graphics tasks right in the timeline. For Video Adrenaline, my name is Rich Harrington, and I invite you to head on over to creativecow.net where you'll find tons of tutorials, magazine articles, help you get more out of the Adobe Creative Suite. Thanks for joining us.